Ladies and gentlemen, nerds and neckbeards. Nerds and neckbeards. Welcome to a, an interesting episode of Whateverly with Whenever-ly, Dave Whenever-ly, Whenever-ly. and Tana. Tana, 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 Hi, Tana, 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 Tana. Hey, Tana, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm surviving good. the quarantine. That's good. So are we. Yeah. We uh we uh we actually fell victim to you know you know there's gonna be a lot of quarantine babies going around. <laughs> um, and- we we didn't get, we didn't get pregnant, <gasps> but we got a fur baby. We got another fur baby. And uh, which so. I just saw. So Dave and I are video chatting for the first time since your wedding. That's right. It's Congratulations. It's been a while. Thank you. Thank you. nuptials, my friend. Yeah. And thank you for that awesome art. We got so <sighs> many. Co- we put it on the digital screens like all around the venue and people were just like, that's amazing. Like, can you tell me like all these little things? Like, like one, some, one, one person came up to us and was like, oh, I, you know, I, I see you got like a lot of like little hidden things in there. Yes. Like there's a dagger and, and what's this staff and yes. what's this gun and why is he, why are you wearing this hat? And I was like, oh yeah, these are from like all the games and all our fandoms. And it's just really, she it's like Tana really captured it well. Oh. And every, everyone was like, oh, that's amazing. I'm like so everyone glad. was ecstatic Yeah, there's like it. a yeah. witcher medallion and the cat's paw dagger and you know uh, uh lauren has a mercy staff yes. and a wand and she's wearing the ravenclaw scarf yes. yeah it's really it's really epic uh, yeah. i had so much fun making that it was nice to be a part of your wedding even though i couldn't be there physically in person it was yeah how was the race uh really good actually uh i was doing good. a ragnar race on the day that david got married uh and you guys got married in a science museum which is so on brand yeah, can- or the uh, uh, Orlando Science Center. Yeah. Apparently, it's like the number one wedding venue in Orlando, too, which is crazy. crazy. They do, or they were doing a wedding every weekend. And so, uh, and so I was sad to miss it, but I was running a Ragnar race, uh, a, a one-day Ragnar race. So Ragnar is usually a multi-day, like 24-hour, 200-mile road race. It's how Kirsten and I met. Yeah. And we've done it every year for like 10 fucking years. Um. But it was so much fun. We got, uh, we had uh, a bunch of smaller teams, but we all sort of camped in a field for the day and did the run. And uh, anyway, so it was wonderful uh, and a, a wonderful way to spend a day. But it did mean that I missed your wedding. Yeah, unfortunate. But you had a good time, and that's the important part. And I'm glad that we got it in before the quarantine. I, that's what know. I was going to say. So. Congratulations on actually being able to get married before thank you. the world went on lockdown. Holy shit. Thank you, thank you, yeah. We unfortunately didn't get to go on our honeymoon. Mm. I actually just just canceled that yep. uh, last week. We had two weddings after our wedding, and then we were going to go on our honeymoon in the beginning of May, and now, you know, we were, yeah, just not happening. Yeah, we were, Kirsten and I were going to go to Iceland. It would have been my first time in Iceland. Uh, We were going with uh, friends of ours from Texas, and we were going to do the whole, like, you know, the hot springs and bike around and do the Uh whole thing, and uh, nope, nobody's going anywhere. So, good for you guys. And also, now you have a baby. Congratulations on your new baby. That's right. We have a baby, and we are announcing to the world that um, his name is Percival Frederickstein von Musel Kowalski de Rolo Willig, (laughs) uh, or Percy for short. Uh, Shout out. Uh, critical role of course yes. amazing name the i so. have the the vox machina trade paperback on my bookshelf right now um oh yeah yeah the the, the origins one or yeah the origins one because published through dark horse which is one uh-huh. of my uh my most recent publishing houses and so uh the people at dark horse were they're selling out of the book like crazy vox machina uh-huh. is so popular all this stuff and uh and so they got me a special copy and i felt very very special Oh, that's awesome! Yep, I'm jelly. Oh, I'm waiting for the the second uh, the second origins like the bundle like mm-hmm. the I don't know I don't know what they're called. Are they called trades? Is that what it is? When there's all like all volumes in yes. one volume? So there's yes. Yeah, so what I have is a trade. I think they're also doing individual issues and then they're collecting yeah. into trades. But then right. all of the trades, which are like six issues, an entire arc of the story, mm-hmm. might be collected in like an actual hardcover like oh, a, a big novel old, yeah. oh that's cool so they okay. at the end of it they might put the entire story together um you know instead of just a chapter at a time essentially yep yeah i've got i've got volume one so i'm waiting for volume two nice. to come out yeah mine so. is, you might be able to see it i'm gonna tilt my screen you'll be able to see him there it is right there oh yeah. there it is that's right you guys at home can't see it but you can imagine it in all yeah. its glory <laughs> <laughs> oh uh speaking of dark horse 
So uh, they published LaGuardia for Burger Books yes. uh, through Dark Horse. That's what it. And we just were announced last week as Hugo Award finalists, David. <gasps> that's that's what, number two for you now? <laughs> yes, two years in a row in the same category. And last year, you'll remember, uh, for my work on Black Panther with Nnedi Okorafor, who also wrote LaGuardia, uh, she and uh-huh. I are the dream team. Um that we came in second place. We were leading in uh, the way that they like release the Did they do like the polls voting. or something? Or? No, there's okay, like yeah, a yeah. voting sheet. And so for okay. a long uh, part, you know, there's six, I think, finalists. And uh, for a part in the middle, we were, we had pulled ahead, but we ended up losing out to Monstrous by, I think, eight votes. Uh, now, eight votes. Wow. Yeah, that's... it was pretty close. It was really close. Yeah. And Monstrous is amazing. You guys should check it out, but you should also check out Black Panther, Long Live the King, the runner up for last year's Hugo Award. So are you, uh, are you like getting like crazy amounts of people like asking like, you know, job offers now? Like, uh, does this, does this the Hugo nomination like explode? <laughs> like, you know, you're on the dream team, right? So I no, I, so everything in comic book industry is kind of panicking and in free fall right now because comic book stores are closing, right? Like nobody right. is going to a comic book store. Nobody's even going to the supermarket right now. Um, right. Yeah, I, I did an Instacart order this morning. Yeah. I was going to go to Publix, but I was laying in bed. I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this. <laughs> uh, we we did Instacart as well. And uh, Kirsten said that right after doing Instacart, they started emailing everyone like, do you want a job? We need drivers. Do, you've used oh. Instacart. Can you come and work for us? <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys uh, have a car out there in podcast land and want to do food shopping for other people, there's a job for yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure all those delivery Grubhub and yep. delivery you know, DoorDash and Uber Uber Eats and all that stuff is probably making a killing right now. And it's weird. And, it's and all weird. those companies are probably not even passing along the 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 boon to the mm-hmm. drivers, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But uh, yep. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, so uh, I thought I had a thing. Yeah, I don't. So yeah. So oh no no huge book offers, but I am working, which is fine. Um, because I finally have carved out time in my schedule uh, to work on Duck Third Time is the Charm, which is my Kickstarter I was just, from a thousand years I was just about ago. to say, I think I got an email with a video in it that I haven't watched yet, yeah. but it's sitting in my email as to watch that said something like, Duck, Third Time the Charm, I'm finally going to be able to work on it. <laughs> I've actually, so, uh, so my last uh, comic book project, uh, which was kind of a dream come true for me, I got to work with editor Heather Antos, who is a dear friend. I love her so much. Um, is this LaGuardia or is this something no, else? No, so after LaGuardia, I did four issues on Livewire at Valiant Comics. Uh, okay. And Valiant Comics has a new movie coming out, Bloodshot. It's their first big, like, you know, motion picture. Oh, this picture. is with... Um, Vin Diesel, I think. Is uh, that... Vin Diesel. Is yeah, it yeah, Vin yeah, Diesel? Yeah. Is that his name? It is. And uh, yeah, so it's either Vin Diesel or Dave Bautista, but I think it's Vin Diesel. It's Vin I think Diesel. Vin Diesel, like, yeah. I think I've seen the trailer. He comes back to life and yes. then, like, he's like nanobots or yeah, something like that. His, like, yeah. blood has a billion nanobots or something, of essentially making him immortal, right? And, yeah. uh, but this is a big win for Valiant Comics. And so their pantheon of comics has been uh, doing much better, not doing much better, but like it has sort of leveled up uh, in yep. sales. And I was working on a series called When You Get a Live Movie. Fire. Yeah. Is that what happens when you get a movie? You like, do Yes, exactly. You've reached level two in comic book world. <laughs> uh, and so I got to work with writer Vita Ayala, who is amazing, and uh, and we were edited by Heather Antos, who is just an absolute gem. So uh, once that ended uh, a couple of months ago, I was able to drop you know drop into the universe of Duck, and and I knew that the book I had kickstarted, which was supposed to be this party weekend in Provincetown, uh-huh. was going to have to evolve and become this other thing and uh and i was able to make that transition really well and i'm loving the work it's um it's a level up for me as well so i'm trying to do things in graphic novelature that i couldn't do in a monthly comic and it's going it's going really great so very cool that's awesome yeah congratulations so when uh i know we don't like to put deadlines on it or anything like that (laughs) but when can we expect uh, can we can we expect it to hit our emails anytime? Uh, uh, just like when soon? Winds of Winter comes out, and I think Winds of Winter oh, will be out when next it's week. ready. Yeah, it'll be out next week. 
You think uh, you think it'll be out next week? There's a there's a running joke in the A Song of Ice and Fire fandom that Winds of Winter is coming out next week. Next week. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Always so coming out next week. Yeah, yeah. They're very excited. It's coming out next week. <laughs> I think I saw on the Reddit that he did make a it was a blog post, but I didn't read the blog post because someone just linked it and said a blog post is coming or something yes. like that. And it's like it's like okay. <laughs> I'm uh, very I'm I'm excited. I mean, so that's a thing we can look forward to in the future. Would be winds of winter, hopefully. Yeah. Speak speaking of the future. Yes, talk to me, David. What one of the reasons why we decided to do this beautiful morning podcast um, was we wanted to we wanted to talk about our future. Um, and for those of you who have actually been listening to us, so like, you know, I guess would be fans. I didn't think that we had any only fans, but you know, um, see what I did there? We, we, plug only fans. We have anyway, fans. Yeah, we yeah. have fans. Yeah, too. we have fans. Um, so, uh, we, we first off wanted to apologize that we haven't been putting out content, um, on a regular basis. You know, we, I mean, it's on brand, right? Whenever Lee. um, <laughs> But, you know, with life and quarantine, not so much quarantine has impacted it, but just life and work and and all the things going on in the world um, and with the lack of, uh, I guess, Game of Thrones to watch and the disappointment in the season (laughs) and no no new book coming out. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of excuses. Um, uh, I think we're we're deciding to finally close the doors on this on this chapter of our lives. (sighs) A chapter of Which our is, lives is ending. I think it's only our pod bean uh, hosted chapter, yes. though. I think we're just pivoting to. Uh, yeah, I, I was trying to build it up dramatically. Oh, I ruined know, more, it. More, more, more <laughs> dramatic for the fans, and I then wish, I was gonna, you know, give them the good, we the need good to, bit. Yeah, we need to do some foley work and have like this swelling orchestra really build up That's the right. musical That's number right. for this. For this, I part. need some. Inse- I need some inception. You know, just the same noise over and over again, and makes it feels like it's deeper but yeah so uh you know uh we do this for fun um and so we decided uh, that we we're do gonna this for glory no we do this for fun what's the <laughs> where's the glory all right i mean that's just what we do also yeah, that's fair yeah we when we had talked about doing a podcast in the morning i was like oh we could do like a brunch cocktail thing and then i woke up and i was like i cannot start drinking this early yeah. like it's gonna set uh, I, such a bad precedent for the rest of my day i had this i had the same thought <laughs> uh, I had the same exact thought i grabbed a coke zero and a water and i was like all right i hope tana doesn't ask me if i'm drinking my bourbon because it's it's gonna be a bad friday if nope, that happens no nope. i uh <laughs> i had i was playing D D last night and uh and i might have had a bit of wine uh, while playing it and so i woke up not hungover but my coffee was going down a little hard you know like it's Mm. it was gonna be that kind of a morning and i was like oof okay Mm. we're gonna just ease into our day although we're gonna ease it i did look into uh quarantine themed drinks like the quarantini The quarantini. Uh, and there have been I liked couple. the garnish on that one. Yeah, the garnish yeah. was a rolled up piece of toilet paper. Not like it was on the side with a little like tie on it, you know, like one little square of toilet paper. And I was like, that's that's a that's it's a genius. That's a fancy drink right now. That's a yeah. That's a rare <laughs> fancy drink. It's a it's a high baller drink when you can just use TP on your drinks and not on your bum. <laughs> that's right. S- speaking of bums, I actually ended up buying a bidet, like a, a, a bidet Did that you? you put on put on the. The, the side of your toilet so you had a toilet yeah, uh-huh. upgrade bidet <laughs> i had a yeah I, I got it's called the tushy it's like you know the one that's mass marketed to everyone and i just bought it screwed it into my toilet and now i can wash my bum with a, a nice pressure washer yeah pressure washer style stream of water <laughs> wash that butthole <laughs> That's right. Wash that booty hole. <laughs> oh, and I can see your little your little baby behind you, little Percy. That's Percy. Oh, he's yep. so cute. He's five hey. months old. Oh, he's so cute. He's five months old. Yeah. Don't and, look the floor, buddy. Uh, apparently, Susie the Dire Kitty is not about having another child oh, no. in the house. You know, um, I thought it was going to be much worse than it is, so that's good. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. You know, I've seen her really, like 
you know, attack people. Like she she's, she's attacked me. you. Back yeah, she when attacked I used to you go once. over to your house to do the uh-huh. reporting, she would like lurk outside of the studio and I'd get up to go to the bathroom or something and she would like, be like spring attack on me. And one time she's uh-huh. like clung onto my onto my calf and was like, Rah! she's just not <laughs> having it. And I was like, Oh my god, I think your child yeah. hates me. And and I've got I've got video of her chasing out potential buyers in the townhouse <laughs> before we moved. Um so I mean <laughs> It it could it could be a lot worse than it is. So that that's yep. important. Um, she kind of, for the most part, stays away from him, which is good. Okay. Um, okay. But at the same time, she also follows him around just to like watch him. Yep. Like, what are you doing? Yep. What are you doing in my house? What are you doing? And then every once in a while, if if he looks at her, she'll like let out a nice little moo, like you know, like get the fuck out, don't you watch me, yep. and then. <laughs> And then every once in a while, she'll hiss and like yep. swat at him. Um, though luckily, uh, she hasn't been doing it with claws and she hasn't bit him or anything like Good. that. So it hasn't been um, no, no like vet visits or anything Good. like that. Just every once in a while out of the corner of my ear, I'm like, I hear. <laughs> yep. And, you know, whatever. It'll give her something. It's good for kids to have, you know, it's good to have siblings. You know, they can entertain yeah. each yeah. other, sniff yeah. around each and- other. And and at the at the when he when we first brought him home he was very scared of her like and he's still like oh, if if she's like sitting there watching him he won't walk past her like he'll wait for one of us to like Aww. be a buffer, um, Aww, that's but so he's sweet. getting I love him he's <laughs> he's also getting a lot more confident in the house so now he's running around with his toys like throwing them everywhere <laughs> and she's like what the fuck is going on anyway so oh I love it those Dave. are my. Those are my animal, my animal crossings. Oh, nice! Uh, which is also huge. It's important that as a uh, as a podcast with its finger really on the pulse. That's right, of, on the pulse. Yeah, we uh, yeah. when when um, Pokemon Go first came out, I think we talked yeah. about that. Like we're really uh-huh. we're right there, you guys. We're right there. We're right, we're right there. there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what's the plan for our future? Then we're gonna leave so, Podbean. That's the idea. So yeah, I think I think we're gonna leave our our. Uh, podcast host Podbean. Um, unfortunately, um, it just doesn't make financial sense. Not not that it's super expensive for our, our level of subscription, but you know we're not putting out as much content as we used to, so it just kind of makes sense to transition it to a free medium, um, which is basically already in the already happening. Um, all of almost all of our content is up on um, up on our YouTube channel, which is Westeros Whenverly. Uh, there is one video where um, I quoted too much from Roy Detrice during one yep. of our episodes. And so we got flagged can- or something. So we had to take yep. it down. And we could yep. like re-record that, po- that portion of it with just me doing like a live reading of it or something. Uh, we could. But, but We have to figure out which one that is again. Though. I know. I know. But anyway. But yeah, so I think uh, from episodes 15 and up... For the most part, all of them are already on nice. uh, on our YouTube channel. So, so yeah, for those of you who still want to go back and listen to our previous casts, or want to see, or, or want to you know kind of see what the future holds, uh, any casts we do will be going on YouTube. So, uh, I'm gonna sound like a YouTube subscribe. I mean, sound like a YouTube guy right now. So make sure you go like and subscribe and hit that bell notification button so that you can get notified when we go live or at least post a new video. It really helps us out. Go ahead, go down. You can't see me right now, but I'm pointing at the bottom of my screen. Go to the bottom and hit that subscribe button oh and hit God. that bell. Wow. Um, wow, bud. That was every, spot every, on. That was spot on. Every YouTuber Let's uh, agree ever. right now, never. This is, never. it's a never. Yeah. Never that. Never. Like we don't, I don't never. even know that you guys are listening to us. So like we're not, That's right. listen or don't listen, but no pressure, my man. <laughs> that's don't right. Don't click that's right. anything. No, There's no. not going to be links. Yeah. If somebody posted a link, that's probably spam. Leave it alone. Be like my. Yeah, you'll be like probably my get rickrolled. Yeah. Yeah. Be suspicious of everything. Uh, delete all but your yeah, emails. Yeah. So, so all our content will be going onto our YouTube channel. Um, you can still follow us on Twitter because this will be making lots of uh, posts and announcements about and what's going on in our lives. You have something in the works, right, Dave? So uh, we have something in the works. We have something okay. in the works. It's so, sort of outside of my realm of expertise. So while I am an enthusiastic participant, I am very much yeah. a uh, not in a I don't know 
not a leadership role, but like not a driving the train kind of role. So what are is you, that, what, are you that, what are you cooking up, Dave? So yeah, so uh, without giving anything away, uh, we're looking at doing kind of a, a streaming uh, weekly kind of show. Um, I don't want to give out you know too many details or anything like that, but um, you know a lot of us have been fans of Dungeons and Dragons, and so. Um, and with the huge popularity of, you know, Critical Role and Vox Machima, as we were talking about, um, we decided that, you know, that's something that we really love and really want to do weekly. And um, with a bunch of players that I've already been playing with and and my wife now, Lauren, um, we decided that we're going to potentially work on a live streaming recorded uh, game session. Since the games that I've been playing have all been on video anyway um because we're all doing them remotely Mm -hmm. um especially now because of quarantine um yeah i think i think we're gonna we're we're working on creating our own world and uh i'll be i'll be the the main dm um be my first time dming i've been a long time player so that'll be interesting but yeah this so be, yeah, that's what we're working on. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I think it'll be, I like, you know, I mean, I love playing D&D. Uh, one of the transitions for me during this pandemic, I was doing a lot of crafting. I was really falling yep. into the world of like building terrain and... And minis. And minis. I really like painting miniatures. And as a person that does art for a living, having a hobby that I don't monetize, like, you know, there are a lot of really great places where you can buy terrain or buy painted minis or you know there's etsy is full of all this cool shit but for me it was a it was a way to do something kind of just for myself or just for my friends you know to make a thing that doesn't have to be monetized i think that's good for someone's mental health in my position uh but now i can't play physical games with my friends they can't come over for game night you know my um wine cork trees I can't use anymore you know like all of the stuff that I've built I can't use and so I've had to try to learn to play virtual games and I've spent a lot of time on roll 20 trying to figure out how to dm there and how to make everything work there uh and your pupper just left I know Sonny has had (laughs) enough of me uh meanwhile I don't know if you can see but I have little Bella uh who's oh she's still there Yeah, yep. <laughs> she just wants to be in whatever room I am sleeping. And I keep taking pictures of her every morning and sending out Snapchats and being like, I need to call HR. My coworker is asleep on the job again. <laughs> They're so funny. Um, so, but so. you've always you've always worked from home, right? So this, yeah. at least the working part hasn't impacted yeah. you that much, right? No, it's actually been really uh, not nice. I wasn't going to say the word. It's been really nice, but yeah. it has. There are fewer distractions. I'm a person who falls into my work hole uh, and kind of stays there. So mm. when I'm on deadline for a monthly comic or something like that if all my friends are going out somewhere, going to have dinner or drinks on the weekend or something, there have been times where I'm like, I can't, I have to work. And now I'm just like, I can just work all the time. And that's also not healthy. But, you know, my yeah. work is is something I really am enjoying right now. Uh, the art I'm producing is really beautiful. So for me, being able to drop into that place is really nice here's the snag david you like going into the work hole i love going deep and not coming out deep into go the work in hole. I'll, not out. I'll be in that hole all day i'll spend yeah. i'll spend oh. so much time i get lost i like to go in and out of the work hole <laughs> you, do. you know just really d- during the day i just i just yep. go in and out in and just out a little here a little there just a little here and there yeah yep. d- you know you want to be doing just- a lot of things at once yeah, you know, sometimes, so sometimes I want to. It's like as simple as making lunch, right? Mm. Like I, I'm, 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 you know, I'm doing some work. I'm working on a on a PowerPoint or some, you know, something stupid like that. And I'll be like, you know what? I'm gonna make a fried bologna sandwich for lunch today. And it's like I come out, I come out of the work hole. A fried I go bo- make for fried bologna. <laughs> yeah, what what's wrong with fried bologna? It's delicious. Are you five? Like who makes yeah, a I've... fried bologna sandwich? Listen. Listen, listen. When you're in quarantine, all right, <laughs> Tell and me. I don't, I don't want to order DoorDash every two seconds, <laughs> all right. I get some cold cuts every now and again. All right. And, you know, I, I, when I was getting, when I was at Publix last week or two weeks ago, I went to the deli and I was like, man, when was the last time I had bologna? Because it's just sitting there. So I was like, I'm gonna get some. Oh. And I made, I'm, you know, but I leveled it up. Oh, okay. Okay. So what, you know, what, what did you do? I, what was it? What kind of bread well, was it on? What condiments did you use? 
So, so I, I was white bread, but okay. I toasted it. I have a, a carbon steel pan. So like okay. I toasted it. I, I butter basted it. I used a little bit of onions and some Dijon stone mustard and some American cheese. And I thought it you know, couldn't it just... get worse. And everything you're describing <laughs> is getting worse, David. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, it's buddy, delicious. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So, uh, Kirsten, uh, the love of my life works in yeah. a hospital still. So she is still going into the hospital every day. Uh, and it is her level of, you know, exposure is really high. Um, we've gotten into a routine where she comes home, um, throws everything in the washing machine right away, gets in the shower. Like there's a disinfecting part of Process. our process. Yeah. yeah. And they are trying at the hospital where she works, they are trying to do telemedicine. But it's the government okay. and it works slowly and they can't really figure out how to do this. Uh, like everybody is trying to navigate these uncertain waters. Uh, and so starting this coming week, they're going to start having like a week on, a week off. So my schedule working from home gets destroyed when Kirsten is home. And even though she'll because be because she bothers you or because you want to hang out with her? I think both. It, not that she yeah. bothers me, but like, you know, I'm I'm used to being alone and working and having my routine. Uh -huh. And now there's going to be another person, uh, you know, in the Walking space. Walking around the house, yeah. maybe watching TV or uh, whatever. Yeah. Asking yeah. me questions. Or even if she just like stays in her own area, I find myself gravitating toward her. Because unlike right. some people who are like, oh, I, I can't stand living with the person, you know, I'm going to murder my spouse or whatever. I'm like, uh -huh. I love spending time with Kirsten. So like we, I gravitate toward where she is. We want to do stuff together. It's been really nice. Um, and I think she and I have, have like dealt with the being in each other's space too much, like not having uh -huh. any outlets really well. Uh, she'll video chat with her friends that we were going to go to Iceland with and they'll watch shitty TV like Kardashians or whatever <laughs> bullshit, you know, and I'll go in my office yeah. and I'll work on D&D &D stuff or I'll play with like I have a group of D&Ders. Um, yeah. You know, that like that I can play with. And so like we we're still able to carve out separate time. Um, but, and also I'm really thankful that I don't live in a tiny apartment. I have a lot of friends who live in big cities yeah. and I feel like that's just got to be so hard like that. Yeah. You just can't go anywhere, you know, yeah. like, having, having, uh, you know, a 3000 square foot house with, you know, a quarter acre of property yeah. is really nice. And being able to even just walk to the mail, you know, our mailboxes are like, you know, yeah. half a mile away. So just being able to walk there with the pupper and walk back is, yep. has been really nice. Lauren, Lauren normally works, um, when she's working in the office and I work out in the living room. Yep. Um, and, and it's not because we don't want to be next to each other. It's because I'm really fucking loud. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> like she can't do even right now. She's probably thinking to herself like, God damn it, Dave, shut the fuck up. You're so fucking loud. Shut, shut the um, door. Shut the door. <laughs> shut the door. Yeah. So uh, one of the reasons one of the reasons why I also suggested that we work a little bit later to this morning was because mm -hmm. she had a meeting and she's presenting. And so yep. um, I'm loud. And, you know, she would have had to explain to her coworkers, <laughs> that's my husband. He's podcasting or something you know yes he's so. talking about game of thrones and bullshit yeah that's right, 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 right. um so we would be remiss david if we did not talk about westworld it is now oh, let's talk about westworld we are like let's, four let's or five it. episodes into season three is it season three of season westworld? three yep. yeah season three yeah what do you think bud oh man um you know it's really interesting because I really feel like this season is not time fucking us, mm -hmm. but that just really makes me want to know where they're time fucking us because like, it's been a very common theme mm -hmm. season one, season two, they time fucked us, right? They, yep. they were showing us clips that were happening, not necessarily in order at the same time and everything's going on. And this season to me feels very much not like a time fuck. Everything kind of seems to be happening yep. sequentially in a drama, in a th in this thriller drama where we're figuring out who all these players are. Yep. And um, it's actually kind of cool. I'm I'm like kind of enjoying this story yep. as well. Um, I think it's 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 moved out of what original Westworld was. Mm -hmm. And it's now more of just like a thriller drama, less like the whole AI is going to fuck you drama. 
Um, but, um, but yeah, I don't know. I've, I, I've been enjoying it so far. Yeah. I, uh, I realized when I watched a couple of episodes of this season that, uh, it's not that it's no longer for me, but I don't feel connected to it as, as much as I did. I think that, you know, I just, so, so it for seems me, like there's less, it seems like there's less like plot fucking like yeah. going on. You know what I mean? And, and that's, I think that's where a lot of people have been like, the season's not as good because there's less like big brain plot things going on. Everyone's kind of like, Oh, I think, okay. This is the story. I think that what they're doing. So I think a common criticism of the show is that they're, they try too hard. They try too yeah. hard to get one over on the audience. They try too hard to do like the game of Thrones twist. And I think part of the stuff that I loved about season one was that the twists were baked in, right? Right? Like they gave you right. clues along the way. They repeated patterns. They they had through lines that felt narratively significant and and that you could sort of cling on to and that would make the end of season one as uh, feel as revelatory and oh my God, you know, because it the way that they cut it together, you know, William's storyline, the man in black storyline could have been happening at the same time as we are discovering this world. And then in the second season, I think, you know, it kind of diverged it got a little wobbly like they lost yeah. those threads it still worked but it kind of like swelled and stretched in places that didn't quite fit but i was willing to go along with it they lost me this season this is spoilers so if you yep. don't want spoilers on westworld please fast forward or stop listening i guess i don't know now be yeah, uh, I'll I'll still try to do it in a way that's like coded a little bit, but when the yeah, just fucking do it when the Dolores reveal happened, you know, it, it felt uh, it felt shitty um, to me as as a watcher because I care about the other people. Who did she bring out? You know, did she didn't bring Maeve for a reason, but she brought right. Teddy. She brought you know the the. Uh, the the kung fu guy what was his name the i love you forever guy like she brought him i guess and oh. then to say that they're all actually her was just shitty right. and hollow uh because i think it makes this character into something that she necessarily isn't which is a selfish character a narcissistic well, character a megalomaniac character and i just don't see the core of dolores in that way so well, it was what's like, interesting is is she brought her she brought clones of herself essentially mm -hmm. but then um but then brought bernard yeah and so you know i so and, St and Stubbs is a host yeah well i i like that Stubbs is a host also i i love that he's yep. a host i thought that was great i think i saw a great post that they they started laying that clue in season one actually when yeah. he's walking he's walking in the woods and sh she's he's with um Becky, yep, Becky, or whatever. Yeah, and he says something like, "Well, it's in my backstory," or yep. something like that. <laughs> yeah, so. and uh, and I like that, and I and I want that through line. You know, I th I got excited about the idea of uh, there was one episode where Dolores is like, you know, sort of micromanaging all the other clones, and uh -huh. uh, you know, and you think one of them is you're wondering who's inside there, and uh, is this one Teddy? Is this one maybe? Um, whatever the the inside the madam house the one that goes crazy oh um the blondie clem, clem. is this one clem. clementine like that could be a yeah. really interesting arc for her character and an interesting challenge for the actor who is trying to play clem inside like uh tessa thompson or something like you know it, yep. this could be a very cool and dynamic thing and then they just kind of fart out that they're all Dolores and it just feels yeah. stupid right like it just feels like yeah. oh you weren't expecting that and like no because you you're trying to build up a world but if you continue to pull the rug out from under people it's not going to stick and so I'm watching it I'm enjoying it but like I'm not I I don't want to I don't feel like I need to be doing deep analysis because I'm just going to be like what the fuck was that episode every time right yeah that's that's fair and and honestly I feel like uh the show creators were watched uh, Altered Carbon and were like, oh, double sleeving. Yeah, that, you know, that's kind of cool. We'll just put four or five Doloreses in bodies. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. know what Altered Carbon is, David. Oh, you haven't watched Altered Carbon? No, what is Ooh, it? You, it? It's a show on Netflix. Season one was really good. Season two was eh. But um, 
it's uh it, i think it's also based on a comic book so nice. or, or an anime or something like that it's called altered carbon nice yeah. i'll check it out yeah season one's really awesome in my opinion so nice definitely check it out um yeah but yeah you know there's that and then also i don't know i like aaron paul i think he's doing a good job you know of acting yep. which is good yeah um that's the guy from breaking bad right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. man such a forehead on that guy yeah right <laughs> he's got a he's got a big five head but i'm like you're making that's it work it. for yourself you're making it work that's right that's right oh, yeah takes all kinds but i like it i think it's interesting you know i like that they're doing uh modifications with like the soldier type you know is he really mm. a human is he a clone is this another application for you know artificial intelligence where they're you know right something i don't know and uh and i think having a common enemy is a thing that you need in a series um and and so they've made it about this not rehoboth but whatever the whatever the like ai system AI, is yeah, yeah right but i don't know which so they it's okay. like re- they were like released they released all everyone in the world's you know like classification yeah. or some shit like yeah, that yeah. so and i wonder if maybe dolores did a thing where she was doing because let's say that dolores who is herself uh has the location double of all d. the let's other, call her double d double d so double d yeah. Uh, is has the location of the satellites where all the information of the hosts went, and right. so what if she's doing this two step where she releases, uh, you know, everyone's information about how they're gonna die and what their future prospects are to everyone in the world at the same time that she like reroutes the you know the the android friends yep. from android heaven like i think i think that's what she was doing there but i don't you know they were like uplink the satellite so i don't know but like why but like why like what is what is she gonna do like she's gonna inject all their data into the ai and then what like because she's gonna if she wants print to, them all or if, like yeah if she wanted to save all of her friends she would have saved some of her friends but because they were like aha gotcha they're really all clones of dolores like it's yeah. just it, it it she doesn't actually care about people you've proven that she doesn't care about the other people and, you know? and and what's what's the end goal right like she she keeps saying like oh we're the it's our world now or it's going to be our world or you know whatever yeah. like okay so let's just let's just talk this out right yep okay you you kill all the humans you take over the world Right. Yep. And now what? You decide you're gonna print babies. Yeah. And like, what? Then reprint them when they get a little bit older, and then reprint them again when they get a little bit older. And like, I don't know the mechanics of that, but like, how are you gonna populate? How are you gonna have different political? Like, are there yeah. gonna be different political factions? What's going? You know. So. And the the overall theme of the show is about like the idea that you can purify humanity, right? Like that's the French guy's Serac's yeah. like whole right. thing, right? Like he he cares about his species because he can make them perfect or something so you have those megalomaniac single-minded betterment of humanity no matter what at their own expense kind of idea and so it might turn out that dolores's ideas are the same and she wants to make humanity better or something like we're not that different after all i don't i don't know how it's gonna go like and i don't know and getting me to care about how it's gonna go they haven't been it's rough it's rough they haven't been able to do this season so uh, so, but we don't have another W for us to focus on. In addition to we your, don't. for your stream, we're going to have to branch out to other letters if we branch out to some other fandom. Yeah. So, you know, throw, uh, throw some things at the wall here can, to see what, what can we I can do. Can I tell you what I was thinking uh, that I sure. wanted to do? Uh, I want to do a reread and uh, analysis podcast of Harry Potter. I think going back through the Harry Potter books would be really fun. Um, and I have a friend in Oviedo, uh, up in oh. Florida. You might be familiar with the area, um, who Maybe. is kind of a, a Harry Potter fan. I'm trying to convince them to do a podcast with me. I just had the idea yesterday, uh, but oh, I think nice. it could be a lot of fun. I know? know a very big, uh, Harry Potter fan. Do you? Um, do you know any, yeah. any Harry Potter fans? Yeah. 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 Uh, my wife, Lauren is yeah. a huge, uh, Potter head. Um, Indeed. Pot pothead no pothead. no no that's something else that's something nope. completely else. your wife is a huge yep, pothead yep. that's canon <laughs> canon now um but yeah she, she loves harry potter i am you know i enjoy the fandom mm-hmm. i liked i really like the movies i read the first four books i uh, think when i was like really uh, i didn't read all the books <laughs> so um so but i'd be interested in in 
in in supporting that. Yeah, if, my if you I have want. A, um, a friend boot, and I don't know if they are uh, if they are good at podcasting at all. But I'm trying to convince them to take a shot and try. So, he, so here, so, so here's the best part about about how this started. Right, we mm-hmm. were just like, hey, let's talk about Game of Thrones like together, and you know what? Let's just record it and throw it throw it yep. on the internet and see what happens. And we're like. 70 episodes later and i was like also i love drinking so i'm gonna make cocktails for everything we do which is something we really need to get back into the heart of so no matter what we do in the future i'm uh redevoting myself to creative cocktails uh for the discerning listener you know i think what happened was uh when we when we separated distantly yeah uh you know because i'm not i'm not a creative i'm not a mixologist so like my repertoire is like beer coke zero and bourbon so uh (laughs) and fried (laughs) fried bologna sandwiches no one is no one is surprised to hear that you're not you're not the fancy (laughs) oh my god oh my god david Uh, listen I cook. Yeah. I can cook a, a mean steak like anyone else with a little surf and turf and some potatoes oh. all gratin and some also, cheesy potatoes. We also started right. with me as the lesbian meat master uh, that, because we that's came over right. for dinner and we wanted to make that's sure that right. you weren't going to murder us. So we had to do uh, the the guest right, that's meat right. and meat that's or right. whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, David. Oh. So how, everything, how things have started, yeah. and now we've evolved. Yeah, we so. started at the bottom, now we're here. So everything right. will be hosted on YouTube. We're still going right. to keep the name Westeros Whateverly, which then became Whateverly with Dave and Tana. Uh-huh. Um, and then we're going to Whateverly something. We can uh, throw this out to the audience. If you guys have a thing that you think would be interesting to hear me and Dave's takes on, you can always, you can always suggest a thing. It's not going to be Harry yeah. Potter with you, David, since you didn't even read the books. But you might be able to do it with my wife, Lauren, and yep. then I can just sit in the background, like, do what I always do, which is just make dirty joke comments, you know? <laughs> We're going to do what so. we always do. Kirsten has been doing the, from Animaniacs, the, uh, yep. what are we going to do tonight, Pinky in the brain? brain. Yep, pinky in the brain. Same thing we do yep. every night. Sit on the Try couch to and have sex in the bed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're, in, we're in two different places on that, David. <laughs> what do you want to do tonight, Dave? <laughs> Same thing I try to do every night, Lauren. Try to get it in. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! This. Uh, how could people? I mean, how could we have denied ourselves from our our, our audience with this? I don't know. Perfect don't know. content. This quality. This quality content. Uh, yeah, and so. Yeah. Uh, in the future, uh, so you can always email us at westeroswhateverly at gmail.com. Yep, you can find us on the Twitter feeds at Tana Ford and at Worry, it's W4RRI. Yep. And, and uh, yeah, fi- find us on YouTube, Westeros Whateverly on YouTube. Mm-hmm. L- click like and subscribe and click that bell button. No, <laughs> never, just, never, David. But never. that's whatever. Never. But we can. <laughs> but we could pivot. I like the. I like the idea of podcasting with you again and carving out some time yes, to talk about. Some absolutely. Shit. We just have yeah. to find a fandom that speaks to us. I had expected it to be uh, Westworld season three, and it just isn't. And I, you know. Yeah, it's- I think if you love something, you should talk about it loudly. But as a member of the comic book uh, universe, like we have one of the most toxic fandoms or an aspect (laughs) of the most toxic fandoms in all the world. So like who feel like, you know, they should say, hey, hey, you, I hate what you do. Hey, fuck you. Hey, I hate this. You suck. Like Tana, I think that's just the Internet. It might be. But like so I want. I don't want to be like, hey, Westworld is doing a bad job. I don't like this anymore. I'm like, oh, okay. Some people can love it. But if I don't have anything super great to say about it, we shouldn't have a podcast about it. Yeah, no, that's fair. I have a lot of super great stuff to say about other things, David. They yes, just, and we and we have, uh, like we mentioned, we have uh, we have a streaming project in the works, which mm-hmm. will be, pro- it'll, it'll probably get its own YouTube channel. Um, so it we'll probably won't be posted on Westeros yeah. Whateverly, um, but and it will probably get its own Twitch channel as well. But if you um, follow we'll, us on the things, you uh, you'll find it. Yeah, yeah, you'll find it absolutely. Nice. Yes. Oh, it's the end of an yeah. era, David. It's the end of the Look, era. I don't even know how many years that we've been doing this. It's uh, been a while. I think it was 2016. Three, I think 2016 yeah. was our first somewhere in the summer. Five years. Like, Lauren says five years because we've been doing it, I guess, just as long as I've been dating. Oh, yeah, that's right. You guys met. Her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys yeah. met when uh, when we were early in the early days of the podcast. Yeah, and, you know, and so... 
another thing, uh, if you guys are looking for a uh, really excellent uh, f- content content on a so song of ice us. and fire, so not us. See, I feel like yeah. we've kind of been edged <laughs> out, right? Like with there's the, too much good content. Yeah. And we're just we're just noise in yeah. the background. We you just know? you know we don't we're not we're not doing we're not doing that quality shit. You guys are should listen to uh, Radio Westeros remains one of the best uh, yeah. podcasts about them. I love the boys over at Davos Fingers. They're about to start fingering the free cities i'm very excited Ooh. about that um what else there's the not a podcast which is a literary analysis of a chapter by chapter read through by two of the luminaries in the uh fandom and then girls gone canon who are uh wonderful women and they're also hilarious and they have a wonderful friendship dynamic um and they take it sort of character by character and they'll follow the character's arc uh, through the story, sort of chapter by chapter, but specifically talking about the character through time, through the books. So there's a lot of wonderful stuff out there. And, uh, you know, and while there is always room for a couple of drunk idiots to talk about something they love, you know, I think we're, you know, that's that's going to be an in-person kind of thing, David. I think this is just, uh, this is just, uh, sim- it's a metaphor for life, right, guys? Mm-hmm. Like, things change, s- situations change. We grow and evolve. And Westeros, when Everly was an am- was an amazing thing, it was so much fun. I think it's it awesome. changed the internet. Honest, I think you know, if I can be honest, yeah. it oh, definitely yeah. changed the internet. We forever. definitely had a major impact yeah. on the internet, the world, yeah. and you know, we're just humbled by that. And mm-hmm. so we don't want to change it too much. So we're just going to take a step back for a little mm-hmm. while. Mm-hmm reroute all our content to youtube and then yeah we'll, we'll be back with more projects yeah. this is not the last you will be seeing of dave and tana i'll tell Narr- you that much narrator voice it was in fact the last time they would it see were, dave yeah. and tana. there's ron <laughs> that's ron howard in the background going <laughs> it was in fact the last time that dave and tana made any content <laughs> Oh, but email us, uh, reach out on social medias and uh, yeah, and follow us on all the things. You can pick up my books if you want to support my work. Uh, you can Definitely pick up any of my that. books. Uh, I should find out this summer whether or not I will advance from being a two-time Hugo Award finalist to a one-time winner. Hugo Award winner. Uh, it's usually announced. The Hugo Awards are usually announced in uh, the summer. I think August. It's usually on WonderCon, but all comic book conventions have been canceled for basically the year, uh, yeah. which is a huge, devastating blow. I mean, it, it for me personally, it's it's going to be interesting and deeply affecting what coronavirus will have done to my industry. Uh, without comic book shows, uh, a lot of indie artists and even professional artists, that's a big part of our income. That's a big part of what we do. It's a big part of how we network and meet fans. And and that's a big part of our jobs. And that has all just evaporated. And then uh, books are being canceled. A lot of books are being canceled. Um, really? They're being canceled? Yeah, or delayed. Uh, I'm seeing it's a just lot of because delays. people aren't going out to buy them. So yes. It's- and the diamond publishing so the there's something in comic book delivery the comic book physical comic book delivery system works on the direct market which has been run by diamond distributors uh which has been sort of a monolith in comic books that has needed to change for two decades and just hasn't and within two weeks of the shutdown they laid off basically all of their employees, dried up the delivery method of all comic books. So the big t- from everybody from the big two down has to figure out what to do now, um, how to get their books into comic book stores, but comic book stores can't stay open. Um, my friend Phil Jimenez and a bunch and Brian Michael Bendis and a bunch of like big names in comics just did a fundraiser yesterday. They started a um, like you can bid on rare items, big important items. They got together a ton of artists and writers and big people in comics to try to raise money for local comic book stores that are in free fall right now. Uh, right. And so it's like, it's, so it's a really scary time. It can be a really scary time. It's a big, scary, changing kind of environment. Who knows what the future is going to hold. Um, but in a very real way, what I do is kind of rocky. So if you guys want to support my work, uh, you can buy my books. Usually, uh, you know, from wherever you buy your books. Um, Amazon, which, probably. From Amazon. And then over the summer, you know, uh, WonderCon is usually where they announce the Hugo Awards, but it's been canceled. So they're talking, you know, some of these shows are talking about trying to do a virtual convention or something like that. 
and hopefully they can, but we'll see. I also had a friend, if you guys Google the Hugo Awards and look at the logo and the like the, the award itself, he's like, why does this award look like a penis? And I was like, it looks, <laughs> it looks like a rocket ship. He's like, oh, I see a penis. And I'm like, oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my to God. To be fair, it's probably a penis. <laughs> it's a I rocket mean, ship. sex sells. It's a phallic symbol. So <laughs> it's, about, it's a science fiction award. It is a rocket yeah. ship. Uh-huh. Oh. God, sure. but yeah. Yep. So I'm about to have a uh, a, a nice, cocket ship. Yes, it's I'm gonna have like a it. I'm gonna have a cocket ship uh, potentially sitting on my shelf. Uh, otherwise, is it, I, gold, is it golden? Is uh, it golden I, cocket ship? I don't know. I think <laughs> it might be it might be darkly colored. Dark. I'd, ooh, mm. so uh, large. Yep. It's mm. probably very big. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> It's very long. Anyway, okay. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> nerds uh, thank you. Nerds. Thank you for listening to almost an hour of us talk yep. about like random shit, um, oh. which is what our which, what our lives have devolved into. And again, um, thank you so much for being a supporter of Westworld, Westeros, Weneverly, West Westworld, Weneverly, yep. Weneverly with David Tanna. Uh, thanks for listening, and please make sure to check out. Uh, if you're looking for the content, check it out on our YouTube channel because yep. the Podbean RSS feed will be shutting down probably in June or July ish. And then uh, so. again, if I had my music at the ready, I'd play like I don't know, sad. This used to be our playground, or so like some, <laughs> you know, like that'll be the music that'll. Hello, know, that'll darkness, my old <laughs> <Yes>. friend. <laughs> Do not despair, and then play yeah. the most despairing music. <laughs> 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 all right guys thanks for listening and uh be sure to be on the lookout for whatever comes next from us yep, so. we'll talk to you guys later cheerio thanks everyone bye <laughs>